Good evening, church. We thank you so much for tuning in to our midweek online service. We hope that you're having a great week so far. If God has been so good to you lately, why don't you just go ahead and give him a hand clap of praise for how good he's been. Hallelujah. I believe God is helping us. And let me just remind you that nothing is too hard for God. Nothing. It may take you by surprise. It may seem hard in your eyes, but nothing is too hard for God. So whatever you have need of tonight, just take it to the Lord, and I believe he will help you. Thank God. We thank you so much for week after week supporting this online service we thank you also for your financial support. If you would like to continue to give to our church, you can give online at capitalcitycog.com. You can text the word give at 919-849-5333, or you can mail in your contributions to the church at 1500 Headingham Boulevard, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27604. We are so thankful for you, and we just love God, and we love his people. If you'd like to read along with me, let's go to Genesis chapter 27. In Genesis chapter 27, and we're going to begin reading at verse 15. Verse 15, the Bible says, And Rebekah took a goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house. And he put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto my father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless thee. And Isaac said unto his son, How is this that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father and felt him and said, The voice, I want you to notice this, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the, vo but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. Back to verse 22 again. Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. I would like to preach to you this evening from the topic, The Voice of Jacob and the Hands of Esau. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to bring forth the word. God, we are so thankful for your word. We're thankful for the truth. God, we pray, Lord, that you would anoint us with a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost, God, to preach what you, what you have given us to give to the church. God, I pray, Lord, that you would move. Take this message, God. Let it be applied to every life. Help us all to grow from it, Lord. We need you today, God. We need your help. We need your touch, God. We pray, Lord, that you would give us what we need. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The voice of Jacob in the hands of Esau. In a day that we're living in right now, I know that it can be a confusing hour for many people. We don't know where to turn to. We don't know who to listen to. It seems like, you know, no matter what the media says, you don't know what to truly believe. You don't know who to really turn to for answers because it seems like they they contradict themselves all the time and you don't know who really is has the right intentions, you know. It's just a confusing hour. We we don't know. People are calling evil good and good evil and there's a lot of things that are being introduced to us today and so if there was ever an hour that we need true guidance clear 
guidance, it is right now. If we ever need to turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to listen to what they're saying, but I want to listen to what you have to say, it is right now. Amen. I'm so thankful that even though we are living in a confusion hour, even though, amen, there are there is a lot of deceit, even though you don't know where to turn to at times, thank God. God for the truth of his word and thank God that he has not left us. God is still in control and that God is still helping us and God will give us the guidance, the direction that we need so we can navigate through this time in our lives. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how dark the day may seem. It doesn't matter how rough the road may be. I'm so thankful today that God is directing our foot Footsteps. He's ordering our footsteps. And if we can get to the place that we can hear clearly the voice of God, we will be able to know where to go. Thank God somebody praise the Lord. And so right now we look, look at a passage, keeping that in mind that we need true guidance. There was a man named Isaac that was blind in the natural. He was blind. And Jacob now wants to receive the blessing. He already has the birthright, which he deceived and which he, you know, tricked Esau and given him. Now he's after the blessing and he is put a, and he is doing it in a deceitful way. He is disguising himself as Esau's older brother and he wants this blessing but he goes to Isaac to obtain this blessing and Isaac is blind and he is not sure. He hears the voice of Jacob but he feels the hands of Esau and he assumes that it is Esau and blesses Jacob. But the problem is that Isaac does not have clear direction. He does not have clear guidance. He cannot see. He's blind. And so he has to follow either the voice or the hands. What he hears or what he feels. But let me, before I get into the voice and the hands, let me just remind you that if you're going to receive direction, if you're going to know where to go, where to turn to, we cannot walk around spiritually blind. I just want to let you know, you cannot walk around spiritually blind. Isaac was blind in the natural. That's why he could not, could not tell. He didn't have clear guidance. And I want to let you know that if we're going to have clear guidance, if we're going to have a clear direction, you can't walk around spiritually blind. You need to have your eyes open. You need to have that spiritual understanding. You need to have your eyes of understanding and light it so you know where to go, where to turn to, where to take the next step. God, open up our eyes once again. Praise God. There are a lot of people that are walking around spiritually blind because they choose to be that way. They choose to be spiritually blind. Why would you settle for that when Jesus Christ can open up those blinded eyes? Hallelujah. They want to hold on to what they believed in for so long. They don't want to ever admit that it is wrong. Hallelujah. I want to say that again. They will never admit. They don't want to ever admit that what they've been following after is really wrong. And so they choose to be spiritually blind. But thank God for that amazing grace. When I was blind, but now I can see. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you follow blind, if you're blind and you follow blind leaders, the Bible says that they both shall fall into the ditch. Amen. It's so sad that we rather put our trust in blind leaders than put our trust in the hat. Hallelujah. Put our trust in God. Put our trust in the Son of God. God, open up our eyes so we can see who is legit and who is false. God, open up our eyes so we can see where we need to turn. Hallelujah. But can I tell you, you don't have to walk around in spiritually blind. 
Because Jesus Christ, the Bible says, will recover sight to the blind. Hallelujah. He will recover sight to the blind. Maybe you were you once seen and you once had clear vision, but you allowed yourself to be spiritually blind. I want to tell you, you don't have to give up. You just need to turn to Jesus Christ and hallelujah. He will recover sight to the blind. Amen. If you allow him to touch your eyes, he will touch those eyes. Hallelujah. Whatever he has to do, he'll do it. But at the end of the day, your eyes will be open. You'll be able to see clearly. Hallelujah. Thank God I don't have to walk around in darkness. Thank God I don't have to be spiritually blind. The Lord can recover sight to the blind. Praise God. Praise God. So you have to be spiritually awake, not spiritually blind. You have to have that spiritual vision. Now, he says, I hear the voice of Jacob, but I feel the hands of Esau. He disregarded, or he followed after the hands instead of following after the voice. What does this represent? The voice represents the voice of the Lord. And the hands represent the hands of the flesh. So you need to listen for the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. God still has a voice. He's still able to speak to us. It may not be a clear, audible voice at times, but you can feel it in your spirit. You can feel led. That's the Lord speaking to you. His word, that's his voice. He will speak to you from his word. Hallelujah. God still speaks, but it has to be up to us to be swift to hear that the Bible says, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. God, help us to be swift to hear. Once again, we need to open up those ears. And God, help us to be swift to hear. Not to be swift to talk, but God, help us to stop, be quiet, and listen to what you have to say. Hallelujah. I wish somebody right now would say, Lord, I want you to unstop my ears, and I want them to be open so I can hear your voice. Praise God. You have to be swift to hear. You have to listen for the voice. Revelation 3 and 20 says, Behold, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and let me in, I will come unto him and I will sup with him and he with me. There's a reason why he didn't stop at the knocking. Because there's a lot of knocking going on. There's a lot of knocking going on. Amen. God told Cain that sin lieth at the door. That There's knocking going on. Sin's knocking on your door. There's pride that's knocking on your door. There's lust. There's jealousy. There's hate. There's hatred. There's bitterness. It's all knocking at your door. But the Lord says, when you hear the knocking and you hear my voice, you still got to listen for my voice. Then let me in. Hallelujah. And we need to open up the door. So God God, help us to have be swift to hear and to listen for that voice. Not to listen to every time somebody knocks, but to listen for the voice. Because if we are his sheep, we will know his voice. And when we hear his voice, we need him to open up the door and say, come on in, Lord. Come on in and sup with me. I need a visitation from the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord wherever you're at. Hallelujah. And then we need to have faith in what we hear. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to believe in what you're hearing. The problem with Isaac is that he did not have faith in what he heard. Because it takes faith to listen doesn't take faith to feel. You feel it is right there. But when you don't, when you're just listening and you don't know because you don't feel it, that takes faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Hallelujah. 
You have to believe. What, what, what is the Lord speaking to you? I said, what is the Lord speaking to you? What do you feel led to do? Have faith in it. Believe that that is God speaking to your heart. Letting you know, here is the direction that you've been praying for. Here is what you've been seeking for. I have the answer for you. It's just up to you to believe the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord. It tells somebody it's time to have faith in what God is saying unto you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. But Isaac did not have faith in what he heard. He decided to follow what he felt. The hands of Esau is what he thought. What he felt I want to tell you tonight, you have to be careful that you do not let your feelings lead you, guide your thinking, guide your life. You cannot let your feelings do this because your feelings can deceive you. Yes, your feelings can deceive you. How many feels like there is no hope? But there is hope. How many has ever felt depressed when there's joy for you? How many ever felt like giving up, quitting when there's a purpose for you? Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? Feelings will deceive you. How many times where you didn't feel like it? You didn't feel like worshiping God. But in reality, if you would worship God, he would pour out a blessing. He would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you. And how many times have we let COVID be an excuse for why we are not in the house of God when we are able to be in the house of God. Because we just don't feel like going to church. Oh, yes. Now, I know, I know that if you're high risk, I understand. But if you're able, if you're able, if you go everywhere else, but you don't come to the house of God because you wake up Sunday morning and you just don't feel like getting out of bed, so you blame it on COVID, I want to tell you, you need to be careful because your feelings are driving you down the wrong path. God, help us. Amen. Glory to God to listen for the voice and have faith in the voice and not in our feelings. He didn't discern, discern, or that mean, that word means to scrutinize. He didn't scrutinize further because he was familiar with what he felt. I want to tell you, let me put it another way. The Bible says try the spirits to see if they are of God or not. We, we really need to do this today. We can't go on by what we feel, what we're familiar with. When we, we, can't, we can't think that everything is okay because that is what we're familiar with. We need to try the spirits to see whether they are of God or not. We need to try. We can't go by our feelings, but we need to scrutinize. Hallelujah. We need to try them. We need to ask God for direction. Lord, I need you to speak to me on this specific issue. Because I want to know, I want to make sure I'm paying attention to the right details. I just want to stress it to you. You can't go by what you feel. God, we need to hear your voice. Hallelujah. We need to hear the voice of God. You may feel like he's a good man. You may feel like she's a good woman. But you don't really know what's going on in that heart. You may feel like you'll never find love, but you don't know. You don't see the whole picture. The problem with Isaac that he cannot, that he's, his vision is limited is that he cannot see the whole picture. He can't see it. Hallelujah. And we don't always know the whole picture. 
But that's why we need to hold on to God because in due time, God will reveal the whole picture. Hallelujah. That's why don't give in to your feelings. Don't let your feelings guide you because your feelings will tell you just give up. You prayed about it for five years and you still haven't seen the answer. And then your feelings are saying just give up, give up. There's no hope. It will never come to pass. I want to tell you, you just need to keep listening for the voice of the Lord that says keep on praying, keep on praying and after a while you will see the whole picture thank god he will do it in his time and it's he's an on time god hallelujah you gotta listen for the voice of the lord the voice of the lord is powerful psalms 29 tells us verse 4 the voice of the lord is powerful the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Verse 5, the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord breaks. It is powerful. And the voice of the Lord moves. Verse 6, he maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. His voice is powerful. It breaks the hard heart. And it moves. Hallelujah. Voice moves. Nothing can stand in its way when the voice is sounded. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His voice we can hear. It's just up to you. Do you have faith in the voice or are you following what you feel? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you for your help. Thank you, God, for helping me to preach this word. I pray, God, that you would take this message, let it be applied to every life. God, we need you, Lord. We need you, God. We need you, Lord. I pray, God, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to us, God. Help us to not go by what we feel, but the soul, but the listen. For that voice, God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for your voice. It is loud, it's clear. You give us the direction that we need. We're so thankful, God, that you won't forsake us. You won't leave us, but you're guiding us every day. Thank you, God. Ooh, hallelujah, God, I pray, Lord, that you would help everyone right now, God. Open up their ears. Let them listen for the voice. Don't let anyone give up. Don't let anyone give up or be deceived. God, help us to follow your voice. Lord, I love you and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's service. We hope it's been a blessing to you. Hope that you have a great rest of your week. Lord willing, we'll see you this coming Sunday morning.